Hi, I'm Sam Dillard, Product Manager with Influx Data. And I'm Scott Anderson, a tech lead on the product team at Influx Data. And today we're going to be talking about Flux optimization against the Influx DB data store. So, Scott, as you know, in big data analytics, people care about query speed, query cost. So how can Flux users optimize their queries? When, when querying Influx DB with Flux, there's, there's a couple levers that you can pull to make sure that that query is as performant as possible. The first one, and probably the most effective, is utilizing what we call pushdowns. Now, to understand what pushdowns are, we need to take a look under the hood and realize that Flux operations can run in one of two places. The first is inside of the Flux runtime or memory space, and the second is actually in the InfluxDB storage engine, where those operations can utilize optimizations such as indexes or code that generates aggregates or selector functions and performs those really quickly. Something else we need to realize is that only specific functions and function combinations can push their operation down to the storage tier. All the data that would be returned from the last function that could be pushed down into the storage tier is then loaded into Flux memory space. So it sounds like users need to be pretty acutely aware of which functions have pushdowns available. Is there a list of functions or sets of functions that this applies to? There are. There's a list available inside of the InfluxDB documentation. The Flux team is put a lot of effort on making sure that the most commonly used query combinations can be pushed down to the storage tier. If you're using from range and filter to query that data, that can all be pushed down into the storage tier. Also, something else that can be pushed down is aggregate window, which is generally used to downsample data. If you structure your query correctly, those pushdowns just happen, and there's nothing that you as a user need to enable. That's very convenient. And it sounds like from range filter is uh, sort of like, or akin to select from where, and so like that whole you know, what people are familiar with in SQL might be pushed down exactly. automatically. Exactly, yep. Amazing. Okay, so if, I, I remember you saying that if a non-pushdownable function is, is inserted and breaks the chain, we, we lose that pushdown. So are there examples of functions that are not pushed down? There are, probably the most commonly used function that can't be pushed down is map. So map iterates over every row in your stream of tables and updates the structure of that row or updates values in that row. So you can't feasibly push that operation down to the storage tier. Some other common functions that, that can't be pushed down, uh, pivot is one that's generally used to pivot fields into columns, and reduce is another one, which is used to define custom aggregate functions. My three favorite functions. So, okay, if I'm using push down functions, what kind of performance gains can I get? We've seen orders of magnitude in performance gains, but it really depends on the query and how much data you're getting back. But I've seen, personally seen, queries that would time out and not even complete, that once they properly utilize pushdown functionality, they return in two to three seconds. Wow, cool, that's a huge gain. So how do I measure these gains outside of wall clock time? You know, anytime you're optimizing a query, you need a way to quantify any performance improvements that you're gonna get. Flux provides a profiler package that ships with two different profilers. The first one is a query profiler that returns performance metrics about your query as a whole. The second is an operator profiler, which returns performance metrics about each individual operation within your query. The nice thing about the operator profiler is it'll actually help you identify what operations run in the storage tier and what operations pull data back up into the Flux memory space. Wow, okay, so the operator profiler I can almost use as tracing, but also use it to even identify new functions that are pushed down that I wasn't aware of. Coming from the SQL world, it's a lot like a SQL explain query where it shows how long each individual operation takes inside of your query. SQL users will be really happy about that. I'm, I'm sure, sure they will. So outside of pushdowns, are there any other tips and tricks that you have for us? There are, and, and they're both still related to pushdowns. But the first one is making sure that you're returning as little data as possible from the InfluxDB storage engine, because the more data you, you return into the Flux memory space, the longer operations that run there are going to take. So you can do things like downsample your data to make sure that there's just less data being returned and operated on in the Flux memory. The second, also related, is balancing the precision or the density of the data that you query versus the time range that you query. So for example, if you're recording metrics every one second and you want to query the last 30 days of data, that's going to return a ton of data. Even if you're utilizing pushdowns, that query could take a while. So you can do things again, like downsample that data or filter it further 
to make sure that you're returning as little data as possible from the storage engine into the Flux memory space. Amazing. Sounds like another good use of our friend Aggregate Window. Definitely. Thanks, Scott. So there you have it. That is Flux optimization with InfluxDB. Hope that was helpful and can't wait to see what you build.